Hi everybody. We are going to learn today about how to create your live binder. And the first thing you'll need to do if you haven't already done this is you're going to go to this website up here, www.livebinders.com and create your free account. As you can see, I'm already in my account and I am going to create a new binder just like you will for your class. I've already got a binder here, but just to walk you through the steps, I'm going to go over here and create a new binder. If you haven't worked with LiveBinder before, I would recommend that you click on this Start Here, your first binder, which is all you would see if you're just opening an account. Um, but I'm going to let you do that tutorial on your own if you would like to. Um, I'm going to just start with a new binder. So as I click on New Binder, it asks me first to give my new binder a name, and I'd recommend you name it the SCD 104 Exceptionality Binder and I'm going to call this demo since this is the first time and this is your demo binder and you will want to describe your binder and you're going to list that it's an education binder and you're going to make it public it's really important you click on that public link so that when you share this with your professor they will be able to access it then you click on create my new binder so now I see a blank page and before you get intimidated and the live binder is set up to be pretty easy. So the first thing I want to do is I want to name this tab and you'll notice it's white and ready to be named. And this first tab is going to be your welcome tab. Now I don't want to add a website here, although I definitely could, but I want to type. So I'm going to go to this content link and I'm going to click on text. So again, that content link, click on text and it gives me all kinds of choices. For my welcome, I'm going to click on this two column text because we're going to do two different things in our welcome and I am going to just click the X and now you can see I'm ready to go so you go over here to click here to edit and here you're going to title this welcome page by saying welcome to my exceptionality oops spell it right please exceptionality binder please do not label this my SED 104 exceptionality binder because that really limits its purpose and function in this binder you should be able to use and add to, to from years to come. Your live binder, just think of it as a binder you would keep on your shelf in the olden days, um, but this is an electronic binder so you'll always have access to it and be able to share it with others. On this side, what we would like you to do is describe the purpose of the binder. So this, and you're going to write in proper sentences, this binder contains and just tell what's going to be in this binder. This binder is going to contain information about the IDEA disability categories and you can fluff that out. I'm looking for four to ten sentences to describe what I would find in this binder. What is here? And you're going to start this, you know, give a basic intro and as you continue to add to your exceptionality binder I would expect you to continue to edit this section. Over here on this right hand side what we would like you to do is tell us about yourself. This is an opportunity to write professionally about how you want to support students with disabilities. Good idea. Add a professional picture and by professional picture we just mean one that will be appropriate to show to students. You don't have to go to a studio and get it done. Nice picture. Add a professional picture. Make sure that in both sections that you're using people first language. An example of this is I might be writing about a student with autism. Oops not an, an autistic student but a student with autism and so that's going to be the first page your welcome section in the second tab tab 2 we're going to change that name and now you're going to tell us about IDEA once again I'm going to go up here to content and this time we just need one column so you're going to click here to edit IDEA here we want you to sum up IDEA tell the actual name of the law and why it is relevant slash important and who benefits from IDEA including the 14 categories. 
Okay, so you kind of see where we're going here. We're welcomed people, explain what the purpose of the binder is and why you're writing the binder. You're going to give a basic intro to IDEA, and then the next thing you're going to do is just start, as you go through the semester, telling about the disability categories. So, for example, we might want to talk about autism. And I'm going to change my content. I want two columns for every disability category. So I'm going to say here, this tab is about autism. Here, I'm going to describe the category and how students qualify. And over here, I'm going to give teaching strategies to support students. So you're going to do this for every disability category, and you might panic and say, ah, I'm out of, out of tabs. Well, never fear, we can solve that. But the first thing I'm going to do, and you can do this however often you would like, is up here there's a save button. I'm going to save now that I've got my three tabs. I don't want to lose that work. You'll notice over here there in the top left corner, there's a, column, a button that says tab, so I'm going to click on that and so that I can start my next disability category. There are also sub-tabs, and as we go through the course, we're going to be asking you to add sub-tabs for each disability category. I'm actually going to go back to IDEA, and I want to add a sub-tab now, and I actually want to add a URL so that I can tag a favorite website. So I've already pulled up this website, and it's called parenthub.org. And it has all kinds of great information that was collected under a federal grant. And you'll notice that right here are all of the IDEA disability categories. And I'm going to use those as I make my exceptionality binder in addition to my textbook if I'm a smart student. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to capture that URL so that I don't lose it. And it's going to insert that right there so that every time I'm working on my binder, I can automatically click back to this subtab. And I am going to say this is the parent centerhub.org and there we go. I've got my sub tab ready to go. So you can add multiple sub tabs to your binder and we're going to ask that under each disability category that you add at least two sub tabs that include good resources. So under autism, one of my favorite websites is Autism Speaks which usually pops up once I start typing, autismspeaks.org. It has fantastic information. I'm going to capture that, and I'm going to say Autism Speaks website, and I'm going to put my link right here, insert. All right, and I've got that link captured. So now that you've got a basic idea of your live binder. Um, some other things you might want to do are go to settings and I like to change my layout. I won't see it right away in this preview um, display but I will see it once I open up my live binder to share with other people. And I'm going to preview that. I like my side tabs at my left. You can put your side tabs wherever you'd like. But you'll notice this is what the live binder will look like as you're clicking in and you'll notice there's the main tab, there's my sub tabs that I can share with other people. And since I haven't saved that Autism Speaks when it's not popping up there yet, but that is what my binder looks like in real view. So I'm going to save that because I like that better. You can also do some changing of colors and other important information. So I have saved that successfully and now my binder is good to go. If you've got any questions, you can do a YouTube search. There are some great videos on live binders there or check with your instructor.